Na hi there, this is Dog Monta, and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna actually solve a couple of questions from the 2023 paper one that was actually written by the GC candidates. So, without any further ado, let's take a ride. So we have this question which is basically on variation. So variation is, is, is one of the topics that you cover in grade 11. And uh, it's the simplest. The secret to knowing how to solve some problems is being able to formulate equations from the leading statements. So let's take a ride and see how we do this. Solutions. So the same z varies inversely. So I'm gonna formulate an equation. Z varies inversely as the square of x. <clears throat> and directly, so we can also say it varies directly as y. So now if we combine these two, these two variations, we're going to have z which varies directly as y and inversely as the square of x. When we formulate an equation, we're going to have z is equal to, we bring in the constant of variation that will be k y over x squared. If you are unable to formulate that equation, then you don't. So you have to have the capacity to formulate equations. If you haven't seen the videos that I did, it should be three months ago. You should check on my channel and you're going to find the playlist specifically on variation. So now, after we have this, let's now read on and see what we have to do. So, and directly as y and z is equal to, we simply plug in the values. So it says z is equal to 6 over the z we write to 6, which is equal to uh, x is negative 3 and y is 27. So that will be k 27. Well, this is why we, we write 27. Well, there is x, we substitute x with its value. So that will be x squared. So now, this one will be 6 is equal to 27 times k will be 27k over this one when expanded it will be negative 3 times negative 3 which is equal to positive 9. So we're going to write positive 9 here. We're going to actually simplify this. So 9 into 27 that will be 3. So 6 is equal to 3k. Our interest is to find k. So now what are we going to do? We simply divide both sides by 3. And that will be 2. So you say therefore, k is equal to 2. <clears throat> so the constant k has been determined is 2. So now, what then is the value of z when y is equal to those values? So now, after you've determined the value of k, you now plug it into the equation that you had formed, and it will be like this z is equal to k is actually a 2 y over x squared so from from here what we're going to do is we're simply going to plug in the values these values that are we are, we are being given so that will be z is equal to <coughs> 2 then y is equal to negative 6 and x is equal to negative to square. So that would be z is equal to 2 times negative 6, that would be negative 12. Over this, when expanded it to be negative 2 times negative 2, that will give us positive 4. So we're going to have positive 4 there, and then z is equal to 4 into 12, that's negative 3. And we are done. Let's move on to the last question, which is c. They're saying the values of we keep on using the same equation that we formulated with the constant with the constant value. So that would be z is equal to 2y over x squared. 
the values of x, meaning we're going to have two answers. When y is equal to a, then z is equal to one. So where is z? We write the value one, two, and then y is eight. That is x squared. Let's execute the operation there. You say y is equal to two times eight, that's 16 over x squared. This actually takes us back to grade nine one or grade eight one. Algebraic fractions. So how do you get rid of the fractions in producer one and then cross multiply x squared times one, x squared which is equal to one times 16, 16. Our interest is to find the value of x, so we need to find the square root of. So the moment you 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 introduce this, you need to know that we're going to have two answers, a positive and a negative. So here, I have x is equal to plus or minus 4. So those are the two answers they were saying, what are the values of x? You see that we have negative 4 or positive 4. Friends, that's how people are expected to solve this problem. That has to do with variation. Let me uh, bring in the other question, which was question 15 which has to do with composite functions and the like. Okay, so now this was actually question 15 and basically it's on functions. So let's look at how you can solve this one. Let's say given that the function f at x is equal to 3x minus 5 over 2 and the function g at x is equal to x plus 2. Find so number one, find the inverse of the function f at x. So now, there are three steps that you have to take for you to find the inverse of a given function. So first of all, I will write the, the function here. So the first step is you let this function, you let y equal to the function that you've been given. So you say let y equal to 3x minus 5 over 2. So now from here, you need to make sure that you make x subject to the formula. So how do you do that? You introduce a 1 and there we go. We happen to have algebraic fraction, an algebraic fraction. So you get rid of the fractions by cross multiplying the, the terms. 2 times y, that will be 2y. Then 1 times 3x, that is 3x, minus 1 times 5, that's 5. Remember, our goal is to make x subject to the formula. So we need to get rid of this negative 5, that will be 2y, plus 5 is equal to 3x. So now from here, we need to get rid of this coefficient by dividing it both sides of the equation. So now we have 2y plus 5 over 3, which can as well be written like this. x is equal to 2y plus 5 over 3. So what I'm saying, I'm saying the first step is, first of all, you let y equal to the function. The second, make sure that you make x subject to the formula. After you have succeeded with that, then the third step is you flip, you flip the, the variables. So this one will now be y, and where is y, we are going to actually write x. And what we have found is actually the inverse of the function f. So you can say the inverse of the function f at x is equal to 2x plus 5 over 3. You've answered number 1. We can move on to number 2. They're saying find the inverse of the function f at 5. So we've already found the inverse of the function f. And the next thing that we're going to do is we are simply going to plug 5 where there is variable x. So we're going to say the inverse of the function f at 5 is equal to, we are getting this answer, 
that would be 2, where the z will plug in a 5, plus 5 over 3, so 2 times 5, that's a 10, plus 5 over 3, 10 plus 5, that's 15 over 3, so the inverse of the function f at 5 is equal to 5. Because we simply plug in, uh, we simply divide the 3 into 15, and that gives us a 5. Are we done? Let's move on to the last question. They say, find the composite function of the function f and g. So what you do is, the first thing is, make sure that you write the first function first, which is this one here, function f. So it's function f, that's the one there. So we're going to write 3 x minus 5 over 2. So now whether it's x, we're going to remove the x there. And that's where we're going to write the function g. Now which one is the function g? That is x plus 2. So we can actually multiply out that. I sort of copied everything the way they have to. So 3 times x, that would be 3x. 3x plus 3 times 2, which is a 6, minus 5 over 2. So now, this one will finally give us, let's say, these two are like terms, so we can actually execute the operation. That would be 3x. 6 minus 5, that would be plus 1 over 2. And we are done. That's how this one can actually be sorted out. Let's move on to the next question. Let's see how you can actually solve it.